let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about greenhouse blankets and tarps, in particular insulated blankets and tarps. It's easier to keep heat than create new heat. Or, I don't know about easier, it's cheaper. And a lot cheaper, especially if you're doing a passive solar greenhouse that's getting its heat only from the sun. So today we're going to talk about how to keep more heat in your greenhouse. The first thing when talking about blankets and tarps for your greenhouse is I'm going to say you really need to look at a passive solar greenhouse design or a Chinese greenhouse design. And most of this video will be about those particular designs of greenhouses. So the first thing you think about when you think about a greenhouse is it's got some sort of a transparent material and it keeps the plants warm. So if you are going to have a single layer of transparent material, whether it's single pane glass or polycarbonate or plastic, there's almost no insulation value to that. It comes in at an R1, maybe, maybe even less, maybe a 0.5 or a 0.2, depending on the material. This doesn't hold much heat. So what people do to save more heat is they'll go to a double or triple layer. Uh, with plastic, they'll do a double air inflated plastic greenhouse and they'll have maybe a foot or more, maybe two feet of an air inflated insulated area, bringing the insulation up to an R2, R2.5, or they'll spend some money and they'll use polycarbonate and it'll have air gaps in it, depending on how it's made, somewhere between an inch and two and three and four inches. Or they'll go multiple layer polycarbonate, which will give you much better insulation. You can go three, four, five, six, seven layers of polycarbonate and still get light through. The problem is, as you add a layer of polycarbonate for more insulative value, you lose light. You lose about 8% of your light every time you add another layer of polycarbonate. So it's not advisable to go much beyond two sheets and have, it's better to have a large insulation gap than a small insulated gap. Or you can use glass. Now glass doesn't lose much uh, light transmission if you add more layers to it. It's maybe only one or 2%, but glass is very expensive. Double pane glass is expensive. Triple pane glass goes through the roof. Don't, I, I don't even want to try and imagine what four pane glass would cost for a greenhouse. You'd be making payments on that greenhouse longer than you'd be alive, then it could generate profit. So the best way to use heat and keep heat is to use a double pane, the cheapest double pane material that you can get your hands on. And then what if you actually put a blanket over the transparent area at night when there's no solar heat coming in to keep the heat that you have? Now, if you have a thermal battery of some sort, a north wall that is retaining thermal energy or a floor that's retaining thermal energy, you're going to get through the night a lot easier if you've suddenly gone from an R1.5 to an R2 to a R7 or even higher with a really good insulated blanket. That's what we're going to talk about today. Simple Tech. That's the name of this channel. And we have piles of other videos on greenhouses and growing. You can check out after you watch this one. There's some really cool ideas in there. It's actually starting to become quite the library of greenhouse stuff on this channel now. So if you got the time, sniff through it. If you like something, hit like. So a little bit about R value. We always hear about this R value and what is it? Well, if you Google it, R value is an insulative ranking factor. And the larger your R value, the more insulation you have. So I'm going to use some of the R values that are in the buildings around here to give you an idea of what kind of R values houses have. And houses obviously are usually a lot easier to heat than a greenhouse because they've got insulation in the walls and the ceiling. So a typical house in this area where I live, and I live in Manitoba, Canada. I live about 60 miles north of Winnipeg. So we get minus 40 in the winter. And I mean, I live on the lake, so we're getting <laughs> some really big winds. Uh, that being said, the walls in the typical houses here are an R20 to an R30. Occasionally you see an R40. And that's a lot of insulation. Um, an R20, which is in my walls of the house I have, is four inches thick. And it's a hard wall 
styrofoam type material. Um, I mean, most homes here though are actually two by six walls and they'll be an R30 or an R40. That being said, the attic is often an R50 or an R60 because heat rises. Well, technically heat doesn't rise. It's the hot air that rises. But to keep that heat in, it's more cost effective to put more insulation in the roof than it is to put it in the walls. So with a greenhouse, especially a Chinese or a passive solar design, you've got large insulative values in your north wall, but your south wall facing the sun is a transparent material. So even though it's a double wall, um, double pane glass, double thick polycarbonate or air blown plastic, you're looking at about an R2. I mean, if you've spent a lot of money, you might have an R3. This is not good. You're going to lose a lot of heat through this. The big advantage or the big bonus is that during the day when the sun's shining on it, it doesn't matter that much. It's still going to heat up. Even in 40 below, if you've got direct sunlight on your greenhouse, it's going to be warm in there. You're going to get 20, 30 degrees Celsius. So our value matters. And obviously a blanket is the way that you get around this. Um, the University of Manitoba did an experiment a few years back on R-value. And what they did was they actually used different types of gases in the blown area with plastic. So what they did was they put a single layer of plastic up and then they stuck argon filled pillows in one aspect. And that was the best results they had. But remember, they're using three layers of plastic. So you're losing 8% or thereabouts on every layer that you're going across. Um, and they used an insulated blanket. So they were able to achieve in a Manitoba winter, which gets down to minus 40, they went just slightly under freezing with no added heat. And the Argon did the best, although they had simple double layer plastic and it got a little bit colder because the Argon had a higher insulation value. What they didn't test was different types of insulated blankets. And I think that's the key above anything else. Who cares if you get one extra point on the R value on your insulated glass or transparent material? What if you suddenly during the night when there's no heat coming in, got an R7 or an R8? That's going to make up a huge difference in comparison to getting, you know, a 0.4 difference on your transparent material when it's being flooded with heat. So to give you an idea of how effective blankets are, imagine camping in the winter and you roll up into a sleeping bag why do you use a sleeping bag because it's warm it's a lot warmer than just sitting there in your clothes well the same thing happens with a greenhouse you have a a roll up and a roll down type of uh blanket and when it rolls down it adds a it holds in a lot more heat r7 is fantastic r8 is even better and Personally, I think more research and technology now should be done on the idea of blankets or insulative tarps for greenhouses that roll down at night and roll up during the day for northern climates, because this is going to keep a lot more heat. Now, imagine if you have the better insulation at night and you add some heat to this. Now you can look at other sources of heating that are more affordable or even that are more expensive, but you're not going to need as much. If you're getting your greenhouse from minus 20 to a plus 10 Celsius, that's a lot more, that's exponentially more heat than going from a zero degree Celsius to a plus 10. That's nowhere near as much. So suddenly, you know, in a two, 3000 square foot greenhouse, you can get away with one or two pellet stoves. Or you can get away with some sort of a geothermal system that isn't going to bring it super hot. But you don't need it super hot. You only need about 10 degrees Celsius at night. And if you have that, you can grow all kinds of wonderful fruit-bearing plants like tomatoes and cucumbers. And you don't have to just rely on spinach that can handle zero. Now that we've kind of decided that a blanket's a good idea, how do you get the blanket up and down? Well, there's two primary mechanisms. Uh, one is a manual crank. And the nice thing about a manual crank is, especially if you're doing this with a greenhouse blanket or tarp that's on the outside, you can judge if there's ice and if you have to deal with the ice and if it's going to break something or crack something and, and 
it's an issue that you have to be working on. Now, you can have a manual one, as I mentioned, or you can get an automated one. But if you have an outside tarp, I'm going to really recommend that you run with a manual one because even high humidity levels or snow that melts in on the tarp, this is something you have to watch and be on top of. Rolling up isn't as much of an issue, but rolling it down can be a problem. There is a way around this. And Dong, a fellow that's in... Alberta, Canada built a large Chinese greenhouse and I'm going to have a link for him below that actually has two layers of plastic and the tarp rolls up in between the two layers. This is wonderful and it's genius. I just hope that he's got enough strength in the plastic to handle high winds. I'm sure he does. But he's been able to keep it above freezing with adding no additional heat in large greenhouses. Like we're talking 10,000 square feet. So he's starting his tomatoes way earlier and he's running his seasons way later, which is getting him into the farmer's markets and the other places that he sells at bigger prices when nobody else has product. So if it's possible to get the tarp on the inside, that's the way to do it. But if there's no other way, there are tarps that are more weather resistant than others. And material is a big issue in what you're choosing for a blanket or a tarp that's going to be on the outside of your greenhouse. So if you look at the Chinese greenhouses, the types of tarps they have ranges vastly. Um, some of them have proper plastic type material that has an insulative core that is designed really to be outside and handle the elements and not freeze up. Although you can still freeze up if you get water in something and it's cold, but they're designed for outside long-term use. Other Chinese greenhouses have materials that are nowhere near as good but i understand that these are small businesses built on a budget with people that don't necessarily have a lot of money and they use what they can so my suggestion is obviously to use what you can use what you have and make enough money to get the better thing later if that makes any sense you don't want to invest and go massively into debt right off the beginning. You want to get some profit going. So don't go as far into debt. Use whatever type of blanket you can at the beginning in a manual type roll-up mechanism. And later you expand your greenhouse or you put a better type structure up that can have an inside automated tarp that works on a timer so you're not going to work as hard. I hope I gave you some ideas for how to actually get through the winter much cheaper than just spending all your money on heating. A tarp will definitely allow you to spend a lot less money heating your greenhouse. You just have to roll it up during the day and roll it down during the night. It's no different than you crawling under your blankets at night. I mean, that's what we do to stay warm. Why can't your greenhouse do the exact same thing? Keep growing, keep building greenhouses. Hope to see you in the next video.